hello viewers welcome back we are now looking at creating formulas within the excel layout so i will just request you guys to go ahead and open up your microsoft excel and when you do that you may be greeted greeted with the a startup screen until you be able to open up and open a blank workbook in other words when you try to open it for the first time you'll find those options you'll find it will give you a, a greeting message like good morning good afternoon whatever whatever it is whatever the time it is at your site until you open a blank workbook like the way you are seeing on the screen So, when you have opened that blank screen, the black workbook, just like the way you are seeing on the screen, it means now you've created what we call a new worksheet. So, a, a new workbook. And remember that we we use the word workbook and the file, the word workbook and the word file, we said we can use them interchangeably. In other words, they mean the same thing. So when you have created a new file, like the way you are seeing, if we look up here on the top left corner of your screen, the top left corner of your screen it says it's a book one this side some of you guys may be having book one here here it says a new microsoft excel because i opened the new uh, since i had the one that i had already opened you'll find that it will bring book one excel like this one it says new microsoft excel worksheet excel so others you may find you have book one and we can see that we have that new book one workbook in other words it's a book one if you have opened it for the first time if you have to create another one it may it may indicate here as book two or book three depending on whichever you've opened if you open many they will just be in that same numbering now let's draw our attention down to the bottom left corner of this excel interface and you can see this is the top the bottom left corner of our excel interface and we can see down here we have worksheets and these worksheets they are numbered we have worksheet number one so this file only has one worksheet and this only happens for the newer versions 
and that's why you're seeing it only brings sheet one alone but for the older versions of excel or in case you are using an older version you'll find that excel will open automatically three excel worksheets in other words you'll be seeing three that is let me just open what you will be seeing you will be seeing three like those ones like the way you are seeing them there for the older versions it will open three in other words when you just open it once it opens three extra it opens two extra worksheets meaning in total you'll be having three worksheets but for the newer versions when you open it it will also open one worksheet so for the older versions if you open a workbook it will automatically create three worksheets as you are seeing down as we are seeing them here these i've just created them they were not there because the newer versions when you open a workbook it only brings one worksheet just like the way you you saw before me adding those three so that's maybe something that you need to note because you may see something different and you'll be like you maybe you've gone wrong no that's how they are these are just versions there are those who are using 2016 2013 so the versions keep on changing now it's very easy for us to create new worksheets just like the way you saw me doing we just go down to this bottom left corner of the screen and we click on this plus button if we keep on clicking on this plus button we are going to add extra sheets but remember when you when you put your cursor there the extra sheet will be added next to that so this is how we keep on adding you can add as many as you want but let's stop there for for that that's that you can actually be a good demonstration but we've seen how we can be able to play around with us we, with that plus sign that we are seeing on this top left corner and you can be able to add more worksheets so now we are seeing we've created more worksheets it is also very easy to rename these worksheets these are the worksheets that we have right now i'm in worksheet number one so if you want to rename these worksheets that worksheet number one and you rename it differently or you give it a different name it is also very easy and now for now we, we, we let's assume that we are using a mouse if you use a mouse to rename this worksheet what you have to do is to just double click on that sheet you want to name if it is sheet one you just double click in other words you left click not to right click but you left click meaning you you press the cursor twice that's what we call double clicking so when the, that cursor comes in you can start typing the name that you want to give to to that sheet we can we can call it cover 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 page or we can just call it cover or cover page you can also go ahead and do the same for sheet two sheet three sheet what whichever so you can just come to this sheet seven you double click and you can call it this you can call this one analysis analysis page 
or analysis sheet. You first delete what is there, then you call it analysis. Analysis page. And now we are done with that. You can do the same for the rest of the other sheets that you've created. The whole idea is that we have to actually know what to do. So, having renamed those sheets, we can now go ahead and look at it, something different because that's how we just see, rename the sheets. So we are now definitely big fans because now, as we've said, for us, we, are, we just want to be more of using keyboard than the mouse because that we've been using the mouse. But now, since we are big fans of using the keyboard over the mouse, and what we are going to do later in this course is show you how exactly, is show you exactly how you can change the names of the worksheets or the tabs using the keyboard and not using the mouse at all so that's what we are going to learn it but in the later modules we shall see for now let's turn our attention up to the top left corner here this is the top left corner that we are talking about this is the top left corner and now we want to we are going to start maneuvering around and putting some formulas in. So, one of the first key shortcuts, one of the first sh keyboard shortcuts we would like to show you is if you could maybe place if you can just go to your computer and you just you just leave the cursor anywhere within the worksheet and you you come and hold the control the control key you you, you hold the control key at the same time you hold the alt key you hold those two keys together the control plus the alt and then you use the the equal sign click equal sign equal sign and then minus sign When you hold those ones and you just go to minus sign because when you place the equal sign it's going to be increasing but you can come and place the minus sign you place all those keys together when you place control plus alt keys and you add the equal sign it means you are zooming out but if you want to zoom in you make sure you add an extra button of the minus key in other words you just press control plus alt then plus equal sign plus the minus sign or the minus key when you do that, you are zooming in and out. In other words, it's control. Maybe I can just type it. You see what I'm talking about. It is control like that. Let me just write the, like the way they are. TR plus 
the alt the alt key alt key actually they are all small letters let me just write the way they are on the on the keyboard plus the alt key then plus plus equal sign then plus a minus key so if you place control alt equals minus you are going to be capable of zooming in and out when you just place control plus alt plus equals you are zooming out but if you just add an extra key of a minus minus key it means you are going to be zooming in control alt so that means if you just stop there this one will be zoom out zoom out but if now you want to go to zoom in so zooming in is going to be is going to be on that you add a minus so that's the difference those plus symbols you don't you don't you don't actually place them but what this means is that you place them simultaneously in other words you place control and alt at the same time so that's the meaning you place control equals you are zooming out then when you place that control and again you place minus you are, you are zooming in so that's the that's one of the key shortcut that i wanted to i wanted you to 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 get because it is going to help us to zoom in and zoom out but now the challenge is if you are using a macbook or those mac mac users macbook users you are going to you, you are going to find that you are going to be using different keys so for macbook users for them they are going to be holding down the command and the options key instead of control and the alt keys so in general what what that means in fact in general if you are a macbook user anytime we mention that we mention the control key you are going to use the command key in other words the control key for macbook users is the same as the command key and anytime we mention the alt key you are going to use the option key so what we are what we are going to do here since we are using a pc this is not a macbook we said we hold down the control and the shift sorry the control and the alt keys and then use the equal sign to zoom out and the minus sign to zoom to zoom in in other words those are going to help us to really zoom to our highest zoom level just like the way you are you are seeing it's now we have zoomed instead of just coming here using the mouse and you just be be clicking on this plus symbol like the way you are seeing here 
we just use the, the keyboard shortcuts and doing like that for zooming in and out. So we just come and we use the keyboard shortcut like the way you are seeing. So that's what we are we are referring to by being keyboard fans and we don't actually want to use the the we don't want to use the the mouse so that's how we, that's that's how that's that's why we are saying we are now capable of seeing up to 400% zoom level that's why you are seeing here the zoom level is 400% down here. That is the, our highest zoom level. So you will also notice that as you zoom in and zoom out, you will find that these percentages are going to be increasing or reducing. When you zoom in, the percentages are going to be changing. When you zoom out, the percentages are going to be increasing so that's what i want i want also you to actually take note of of that so those zoom percentages they are changing on your screen especially when you are doing zoom in or zoom out so one of the first thing to know in excel is it's efficiently like a grid it's 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 when you when you look at this maybe we try to zoom in a little bit would we'll be at maybe at a hundred percent when you look at this excel worksheet it looks like a grid It looks it looks like a grid, and you can move around in in the grid using the arrows on your keyboard. So you are seeing this one looks like a grid. Uh, it has that square, those squares or rectangles that we are seeing that are formed between columns meeting meeting rows so if you look at our screen here we are moving around when you look at our screen we are moving around using using all of the arrows and you can see up here we are moving using the up the arrows that are on our so they are taking us to different directions so Maybe we just if we just go to the cover page and we look at we, we put we place our cursor in A1. That is our first box that we have or our first cell. So we are now in cell A1. And you can see that the 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 name A1 right up here in the name box you are seeing that this a1 that we have here it's where it is is what we call the name box we saw that so one thing that we are one of the things that we are going to see later in the in, in this in, in the course is that we are going to be able to change the name of the cell from a1 to a different name we said we can change the name of this a1 to a different name so 
if you could please just maybe if you just go to maybe this new cell cell b2 if you just scoot over to 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 cell b b2 and maybe let's just drop there some numbers let's just put the there maybe two two three numbers we just put in some numbers there so we can put in these numbers we can put it maybe one let's enter we put in two maybe three we can put in those just like just those three numbers one two three just like that now we want to go down to this cell b5 because we have put in from b b2 this is b2 up to b4 so if we just go down here to cell b5 and we put in a formula in that cell b4 b5 just to add up or to sum up these three numbers so if you want if you want us to get the total of these numbers here in this cell b5 what you have to do is that there are three there are really three ways that we can enter a formula into a cell in microsoft excel so what we want to do is we want to create a formula that is going to help us sum up those values up to from b b2 to b4 we sum up those values and we get their totals so we have three different ways of how we can actually put in a formula in a cell. The formula is going to be going into this cell B5. The first way to enter a formula in a cell would be to tap equal sign. That's the first, that's where we want our our formula to be so the first thing that we we need to do, we, we can do or the first way is to just put in our equal sign and then type in the word sum we can just say sum and it has brought the this sum stands for sum function so we can maybe we can just place enter sorry we can just sum we can place the tab key remember we are not going to use the mouse so what we do instead of pressing because now there are two options here you can just put sum and then you double click this blue the this sum that is that is highlighted in blue you double click when you double click it will be able to give you the same scenario but since we said we are more of keyboard than the mouse so we can delete that and we say sum then we press the tab key tab key on your keyboard is there on the, your left hand side it will also bring the same the same thing so when you when you are done tapping here when you are done placing that tab key we shall see that we are going to have some but we shall also have an open bracket and now 
in the order in order to select the the cells we would like to actually sum because now it has opened the open black the 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 opening bracket which means they just want us to list whatever we want to sum or whatever we want to get a total for so we are going to sum up all those cells because it is going to be cell b b2 plus b3 plus b4 so so as to be able to get an answer in cell b5 so since we are seeing we we are, we are seeing would like now to we we are going now to tap the the upper arrow because remember here we are training ourselves not to use the mouse because if you are using the mouse you could just drag here and you select all of them but now what we are going to do is we are going to use the upper arrow so So we can now go to our we can now go to we can now go to our keyboard then we use the upper the upper arrow on the keyboard So for those who haven't seen, maybe if, if, if you haven't seen the your your upper arrow, for you to be able to 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 add to move from from that cell that we we, we wanted to to add up. So you press the upper arrow. That upper arrow is going to take you to cell B, B2. But now, the issue here is that we would like to select all the three cells. So what, what we are going to do, we are going to hold down the shift key. Because now, here we've moved a little bit far. When, you are, when you, are, you are within this cell, and you just move up a little bit to cell B4, what you do if you want to select all the three, you, you hold down the shift. In other words, you place the shift key like that. When you press the shift key, the next, the next thing that you are going to do is to move up with that same upper arrow. You are seeing. When you hold down the shift key, 
it's going to help you move to if you press the the, the down key is going to move downwards but for us we want to move upwards but you keep on holding the shift key and then you will be able to select all the three the three cells that we want to to sum up so when you are done to getting all the cells that we want to sum up then we then we can actually come to we can just hit enter because from there since it is just only one open bracket then we don't even need to to close the bracket we can just hit the enter key and now we are able to sum up those figures if you only do that if you have only one open bracket but if there are two open brackets then it means you can't just press enter it means you will need to first close off those brackets but if the open bracket is only one you can just ignore and just press enter and now we've we've put in the sum function in this because now if you add one plus three plus two that's three three plus three that is six that's the total and you're seeing the the formula it has displayed itself in within this formula bar but we've not just put the formula bar here we just put it here but it deflected from this from this side so that's what we meant last time we said we don't necessarily put the formula here but what that means is that the formula bar even if we don't put it from that point it will also be reflecting or it will always be showing from that formula bar so that is the first the first method we can maybe just click the we can just see click the delete button delete key when you 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 click the delete key it means you have deleted everything so let's now look at the second way that we can enter a formula so the second the second alternative that we can use to actually put in a formula is that we can actually the second way to enter a formula is that we can go up here to the formula bar and type in equal sign we can just come here remember here we have nothing we can just come to remember one one that answer from that point so we can just come there and we type in the equal sign when you put in the equal sign within that formula bar So we we have we, we have put in equal sign. We can also add in the word sum. S U M. S U M. Then we also go ahead and click the tab key to have that open bracket. And then now we can select the cells in a similar way the cells we are going to select them in a similar way what was the way the way was to 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 use
the way was known to actually use the the was known to use the, the the mouse was to use the keyboard the same way we did it last time is the same way we are going to to do it in the in the second phase So we do that. Just place the shift and we we'll move. Then we place enter. And it has already given us the formula. In the same second way, we, 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 that's the second way we can actually put or create a formula in Microsoft Excel. Now the third way that we can enter a formula in Excel would be to go up here, right next to, we can press the delete button, we just go up here, just right next to the formula bar, where it says FX here. And if you click on this FX, it brings a word insert function. So for that, for insert function, we can see there we can see here that it's already defaulted to when you click on that you can actually see that they have already given you the the the, the items that you can actually use but it's already defaulted to a sum function So you are seeing there, there is some function there. There are so many that, that, are, that are within that, that are within, that are, with, that are, that are already there. So we've selected what we want to do. We want to sum, then you can come here and say, okay. And now you are seeing, it has selected the items for us. When you press okay, you are seeing it has already selected the, the things for us. It's now asking for the sales that we would like to, to sum. So we could select the, th those. If there were many, we could add them here. So, and after putting those, then you can now come here and click OK to sum up. And you are seeing it is also giving you the same the same answer of six. So that's the third way that we can actually use the, the third way that we can actually sum up or that the, the that's the third way we can actually create a formula within Excel. So, those are the three ways that you can enter 
that we can use to enter a formula in Excel. But definitely the fastest and the most common way is to enter the formula directly into the cell. Meaning it is the first one that we went, we went through. It is just entering the sum like the way we did. Then you press control, you press shift, the upper button and you press enter. So that's the most and the fastest way to enter a formula in Excel. So that's how we, we are able to actually put formulas in Excel. Now, if you want, if, if maybe, if maybe you, you watch our cursor, this entire area, this entire area here is referred to as Maybe I can bring this back. This is what this refers to as a ribbon. The whole of this is referred to as a ribbon. And there are many sections. We have the home. From here, we have file, home, insert. There are so many sections as we spoke about them. So, in the next few lessons we are going to to be we are going to go through those sections in details some of them in details and we will see what is there within the the ribbon because this is the whole ribbon but we have so many sections we have file home insert page layout formulas data review there are so many. So now I want to go through some of them. We want to see how we can be able to add some and how we can be able to see what specifics that are within those different sections. But we only pick out what is relevant for the finance industry. So that's going to be in the next video. Thank you for watching. Let's meet in the next video.